All right, guys, bit of a late night stream out of the blue. We're gonna be doing a draft of the Corset 2019. So it's gonna be a full draft. We're going from beginning to end. We're gonna draft our deck, which is uh, one of the, I think most exciting aspects of Magic is the draft format. So essentially what you do is you get three packs in total. Now you don't get the entirety of each pack. You crack a pack, you pick a card from it, pass it to the player next to you. Uh, then you get a pack passed to you. You pick a card from that and you basically just go in a full circle until you, you craft a deck as you go. So there's a lot of tactics, not as much tactics as there is in tabletop drafting, because in tabletop drafting, you have to be like reading signals and, and getting messages from nearby players, like saying, OK, this color is missing. So it's going to be a little bit risky going further into this. Magic the Gathering Arena is a lot more forgiving as far as drafting goes. It's definitely quite a bit of fun. But um, today, this is a, a limited format or uh, constructed. Uh, it's not constructed. So basically, I'm going to be creating a deck from scratch. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what color I'm going to pick. I'm going to be building the deck with you guys. So yeah, I really have as, as many ideas as you guys do as for, in regards to what colors I'm going to be playing. Uh, typically, I play, uh, to answer your question, I play stand, uh, not standard too much. I play commander in paper, like hard paper. I have like a whole battle chest in my closet. It's like massive. And it's filled with like seven or eight binders full of rares. And, and I have like I have so many cards, guys. I have so many cards, um, but I haven't like bought magic cards probably in like four years, three years. Uh, you know, and Magic the Gathering Arena is pretty fun. Like I can get on and play and kind of scratch that itch a little bit, especially considering I'm more into 40K right now. What's up some dude? Yeah, Commander is the best format. If anyone wants to play magic like in paper <clears throat> with your friends, I would highly, highly recommend investing in, uh, in what's it called, uh, in Commander. So yeah, we'll just hang for another minute. <laughs> looking like a snack. What does that mean, Dylan? <laughs> does that mean I'm looking? I don't know if that's like slang, but uh, I'm pretty tired for sure. Might be slightly under the weather. I, I don't really know if it's like just the temperature changing in the seasons and kind of like allergies or something or if it's whatever it is, but I'm feeling good. Yeah, it's time. Uh, Slither decks, I think is what you're asking, Dominic, and they are in uh, certain formats, uh, not in Magic the Gathering Arena. So Arena is actually just the most recent couple sets. Yeah. So yeah, we'll start in just a minute here. We'll get rolling on the draft. So cost gems. Uh, I didn't have any gems, so I had to buy these just to entertain you guys. But it was only like $4.99 to uh, do this draft. So I was like, yeah, whatever. We'll jump on and, and do a quick draft with you guys. Be quite a bit of fun. And uh, for anyone watching, I'm sorry for those of you in Europe. I'm sure it's like, uh, you know, the wee hours of the morning if you're on right now. But uh, the video will be up tomorrow for sure. Uh, so anyone who wants to watch it after the fact can. Edgar Markov is really good. He's a really fun tribal deck. I actually uh, played that as well for a quite some time i got a little bit bored of it because i'm one of those people who has like deck deck crafting just i'm just all over the place i'm, I'm always going to be making a new deck <clears throat> yeah okay i think we're good we got uh we got the boys here the boys are back in town and we're going to start the draft so we're going to purchase this item here's how it works you open a pack you take a look at everything you're like okay so now i have a handful of cards so the rare we got equipped creature has 2-0 vigilance and is a knight Ooh, that is this is a really good equipment this is actually one of those things that can like help you run away with the game oh thanks dylan really appreciate it man uh that's quite a compliment yeah so the sigiled sword pretty good other picks that's not so good i mean there are some synergies the harpy is really good in draft format um but personally i think the sword is going to be the best here it works in any colors it's really safe uh you can make like even the dumpiest creature generate value it's it's worth picking so we're gonna go with the sword for our first pick here we have uh, not too much. Let's see. So we do have the Aether Shield Artificer. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact creature control gains 2-2 two, two and gains indestructible. That's not bad, but it's a 3-3 three, three for 4, which isn't that great of a vanilla body as is. Uh, the Encyclopedia, not amazing. And also the thing about drafts is you get to uh, keep everything you draft. So it's kind of a lame pack, lame duck pack, to be honest. I mean, I could go for the Aether Shield Artificer and hope to get some artifact creatures, that could generate some pretty big value, but there's not that many in the set. I mean, I guess there's a couple. Um, uh, when will we see more Total War videos of you uh, prompting generals with silly names like the Pigeon Lady? Oh, tomorrow. I post Total War videos every day. Every day. I actually put one up earlier. It wasn't with the Pigeon Lady, but I mean, yeah, Total War is always always going to gonna be my... Oh, this is pretty good. I mean, removal. I kind of want to take the removal because removal and draft is super valuable. I think we're going to take that. I mean, that creature is okay, but... Um, and we don't know what color we're going to go into yet. So we got the heroic reinforcements. Create two two white soldier two, uh, soldier tokens. Create two one one white soldier tokens until end of turn creatures you control get one one. Hey, so that's not bad. Uh, the Pegasus is pretty solid. Whenever it attacks, target attacking creature 
Gains flying, that's really good. Flying creatures are so annoying, especially with like the sword I have. Well, uh, Vanguard. You control three or more creatures, it gets 1-1. One, one. Until end of turn, you gain a life. That's not bad. I think the Pegasus might be the direction we go. Other spells here are okay. I mean, basically, you want, like, black-white flyover is actually really good. Flying, that thing's pretty annoying. I mean, the Vanguard's okay, too. Yeah, Rabid, Rabid Bite isn't bad. It's a, it's a decent removal spell. Not bad at all. Cancel, going into blue. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of playing blue. I think we're going to go for the Corsair. The Corsair here. I mean, I could have taken that Boros card. Double cast. Blanchwood armor doesn't seem the best. I'm, I'm not going to be playing mono green as of now. Uh, Mine Rot, we got the Epicure of Blood. Whenever you gain life. I mean, it is a 4-4. Four, four. Iron Blades aren't bad. They have Flash. Um, but the flyover is pretty nice. Like, this is going to also give another creature a mind flying. So that's really, like, good synergy for an early aggressive creature. We're, t we're tentatively in black-white right now. Uh, Mighty Leap's okay. I mean, I could take the Epicure of Blood. I, don't have I mean, this is a synergy with that. Life gain thing isn't that great, to be honest. I mean, Mind Rots gets rid of two cards at least. I'm not going blue. Don't worry, some dude. I'm not. Uh, the Frilled Sea Serpent. I mean, I guess it's a, it's not that good. This is like, these are some pretty limp packs, to be honest. I mean, the Mine Rot does have some decent value, at the very least. Epicure Blood, Mine Rot. I'm kind of between those two right now. Double cast in red. I mean, I could just pick up some red bodies. Because I'm not like that deep in either color right now. 3-2 Menace. Yeah, we'll take that just in case. Because we, we could switch into red, you never know. Uh... Yeah, Core 19 is okay. Ravnica drafts are more interesting for sure, but I just didn't have the gems to do it. I didn't want to like pay like $20 or whatever or to get the gems. Uh, can't be blocked by red creatures when it enters the battlefield. Hmm, that's not bad. We have the Falcon. The only problem is it's in the double white, which is a little bit clunky. In red, we have the Fire Elemental. I think we're going to go with something in here. That's, that's a pretty good enchantment, the, the Ether Tunnel. Um, do we want to go with the Loxet on Line Breaker just for like a cheap white creature? The Mare can't be blocked by red creatures when it enters the battlefield. That's pretty good. You get to gain life on the trigger. I think we're going to go with the Mare. Revitalize isn't bad. Uh, Macabre Waltz. The Vyashno Pyromancer. <laughs> Blue is for kids that reminded the teacher homework was due. <laughs> That's pretty funny. The Waltz isn't terrible. We're not like too deep into red or white. Depending on what we get in the next pack, we're going to like commit to either red or black probably as our second color. Definitely white's looking good for our first color though. Uh, revitalize, gain life, draw a card. Recollect is okay. Waltz, I think we're just going to take some decent creature value here. That's pretty good to be able to pop a Planeswalker or a creature. So we'll probably take Omi there. Citrus Supplier, uh, we're not really going to have too many reanimator options, so uh, it's really not that great of a creature. Invoke the Divine is decent sideboard. Hired Blade is probably our best bet here. The Hired Blade is nice with the Flash. Yeah, we're going to. Exactly. Yeah, I don't I don't have to commit. Like, I have two more packs. I mean, I have removal. I have some decent red creatures uh, for a more of an aggressive deck. Or that's a decent creature, actually. The Daybreak... Uh, Cap Chaplain is actually really good synergy with the uh, the sword I have too. I think I might actually just take that because it's like it's just a solid cheap creature. We're gonna go with that. Here, more white. Uh, Inspired Charge isn't bad in a draft format. I mean, it does give your entire board a pretty fat buff. But I really do think I need some top end in the deck. I mean, Duress is actually a decent card in general. We could go with the Knight of the Tusk. I think we're gonna go with the Tusk. He's a, he's a good top-end creature. Uh, not great, but... We want some more low-end black creatures. Smelt isn't really worth it. The Scholar is just a piece of garbage. Uh, the Walking Corpse plus the Bog Stomper. Bog Stomper. Hmm. Bog Stomper looks kind of cool. The big beastie. I feel like this guy is a little bit better just because he has that higher-end toughness. Go with beat him. And the rest of it's just kind of clean up at this point. Uh, we can just take the Walking Corpse because we're in those colors. Double Cast is still there. It's funny. Such a such a haggard card. It'd be fun, though. Uh, we'll take the Naturalize, maybe just... Or Smelt. Yeah, because we're not going to be in green, probably. I mean, it could happen. 
as long as you control an artifact or the elemental, which I think is probably going to be a little better. Take the naturalized, and then we take... Oh, we actually got a playable card. Liliana's Contract. Oh, man. What is this? When it enters the battlefield, you draw four cards and you lose four life. That's not bad. Although I feel like in draft, it's kind of risky. When it enters the battlefield, draw four... And you lose four, so... Okay. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four or more demons with different names, you win. You know... I want this card for my personal collection, so I'm a little tempted to greet it, even though the Harpy is probably the best pick here. Unfortunately, I'm getting kind of like junky, junky cards otherwise. I mean, the, the Gallant Cav isn't bad at all. That would actually even be a decent pick. Um, Knight's Pledge isn't bad. Contract, it's like basically like paying five to draw four and lose four life. Got the Knight's Pledge. Which could be okay, buffing up the cheap creatures, trying to like blitz in there. I honestly think black white is going to be really good here. Hired blade, we have the uh, lich's caress. The harpy is like so good. Okay, we're actually going to try and do well on this draft. We're going to take the harpy. We're not going to like greed draft. Are you guys trying to name the cards? <laughs> Gary Jeff, uh, landed creatures. Oh, that's not bad. It gets rid of hexproof on my opponent's creatures. Uh, the Vine Mare isn't bad. This guy is pretty good, the Pegasus Corsair. I think we're going to go into Black White. Sacrifice a creature, draw three cards, sorcery speed. Uh, let's get the Flyer for now. Yeah, I like the Pegasus quite a bit. Ooh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, this is just some trashy artifacts energy card. But the Herald of Faith is pretty good. I mean, it's a Flyer, it gains life. It's Ooh, but the Vampire Sovereign is really good too. And that actually has a, a burn trigger when it enters. I think that's better. This is getting better. Our deck's getting better for sure. Rise from the Grave isn't a bad draft card either. Because uh, it's either graveyard. Gives you that late game value. But I don't have too many big things. Do I just get the Knight's Pledge? Let's get Rise from the Grave just in case. I think it could be could be pretty good. Alright, so we are on another pack. Amulet of Safekeeping. Whenever you become the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, counter that spell unless it pays one. Creature tokens. Yeah. Not very good. Uh, we're probably going to get just the little junkie dude here, the uh, Rustwing Falcon. Like, it's an annoying poking creature that can have my sword equipped to it. Um, you could go for the Manolith, but I think the Explosive Apparatus is better. It's it's removal, and it's like pressure on the board. So, sorry if I'm going a little faster with these things. Yeah, this is Magic the Gathering, and you guys will get more of a sense. Like, right now I'm building a deck. So, uh, you build a deck through with random cards. It's essentially the, uh, the core of the uh, draft format. Uh, Abnormal Endurance isn't bad. 2-0, and it gives the creature Revival, so that's pretty good on your big creatures, but Knight's Pledge can be really, like, take games very, very quick. Uh, really do like this, though, this this combat trick. I feel like that's pretty sexy. Uh, we'll do the Knight's Pledge, though. I think that's a little going to be a little bit more useful. We actually get a, a white-black dual land, which is funny. Oh, that's good. Infernal Scarring. I think we are going, going to go for, like, a white-black aggro deck. Oh yeah, we got another Knight's Pledge in there. That's solid. Walking Corpse, it's like... Doom Dissenter might be a little better, actually. Uh, Two-Headed Zombie. Now, he's actually not bad because he does have Menace. It's not great by any stretch of the imagination. And yeah, guys, this game is an open beta right now. It's it's actually free to play, so it's uh, it's it's a good time to jump in. Uh, we'll take the Abnormal Endurance. It's, it's okay. And uh, Sovereign Bite. They're just all junky cards. These are just all junky. I mean, I guess the Greenwood Sentinel is playable if we somehow magically got into green with like some insane mythic. Uh, we'll take the Infectious Horror, which we're probably not going to use, and the Serpent. Pack three. Man, we, this is probably the worst draft packs I've ever opened. Like, Amulet of Safekeeping is an absolute trash card in this, uh, I mean, creature tokens. It's a sideboard card for uh, standard, if anything. So we don't have any artifact creatures. That's not very good. Fire Charge. Oh, that just feels so terrible taking that first. Uh, this actually isn't bad. The Marauder's Axe. Not very good. This is a good card if we were in green, but we're not, so. And now, like, if you were playing a draft at, like, a local game store, you'd have to worry about passing this card. Like, you might want to take that defensively so your opponent doesn't get it. But uh, here, since I'm just drafting against the computer and being put up against mid different people, it doesn't really matter. Skeleton Archer is a decent pick. Has, like, a pinging effect. Uh, you can get rid of annoying creatures. But I do like the Axe because I have a ton of, like, crappy creatures. I think that's going to be good for... 
kind of the style of play. Ooh, that's good. Iromancer's Cage gets rid of anything. It's like a, an all answering. That's so good. We can get a couple of remo oh, Luminous Bonds. Okay, we're getting some good stuff now. We don't have any like good rares, but we're getting like solid removal. Lich's Crest too, but this is just uh can't attack or block. Oof. Omniscience. Oh, I kind of want this card for my collection. But <laughs> Darkest Mike says he's half chub. Hey, man. Nothing wrong with being half chub. You're halfway there, you know. Oh, locks it on line breaker. We take the stag. The stag is a better aggro card because it taps down their creatures. A desecrated tomb. Whenever one or more creature cards leaves your graveyard. Luminous Bonds again. I, I can't tell you. The name of the game in drafting is removal and cost efficient creatures. Uh, Child of the Night isn't a bad kind of low end creature. It has lifelink. Novice Knight. Yeah, rest is really good. Rest effects. Uh, as long as Novice Knight is enchanted or equipped, which I actually have a ton of enchantments. I think we're going to go for that. The Balbra. The Brawling Ogre. Uh, Two-headed Zombie or the Dwarf. One for each creature I control. That could be good for like a tempo swing. So we're going to take the Dwarf and Priest. And one Inspired Charge won't hurt either. Uh, trusty Pack Beast. Returns to target artifact. It's actually not bad. It's in case they have removal on my axe or my explosive apparatus, there's some synergies with the Pack Beast. Uh, we'll take the Knight's Pledge. We'll take the Loxed on Line Breaker, which is not a bad late pick. Uh, Mighty Leap's fine. And this is just like junky at this point. It doesn't matter. So, the deck is now, I have 61 cards to work with, right? So, I I'm going to be playing Black White. So, the first thing you want to do is now that I know my colors is to go through and remove any cards that aren't my colors. We're just going to get rid of them. And that's going to make the cutting process much gentler. We actually got like pretty decent. So I have to get rid of 13 cards. So we're going to keep these guys. I like the apparatus. So uh, we'll get rid of one Knight's Pledge. I think that's overkill. Mighty Leap we don't really need. We will temporarily cut Abnormal Endurance. Child of the Night we're keeping doomed. We want to have a really fast. We might even put back in that Knight's Pledge. Uh, so here's our curve right now. We have a pretty good two, two to three curve, but it's it's yeah, it's it's pretty lopsided there. Uh, Luminous bonds. We have to keep both of those. Pegasus coursers. Yeah, shield mirror could be a sideboard. Double white. I think we were gonna sideboard that card. Life gain is nice though. Uh, Ravenous harpies amazing. Dwarven priest. We're gonna keep. We want to keep the dwarven priest. He's kind of a clunky or drop. But let's keep looking at what else we got. Yeah. So the infectious horrors need to go. Those things suck. Typically, they're not very good. All right, so we got seven more cards to cut. The stag is really solid. Inspired charge isn't, isn't bad. But it's not like the most exciting draw. Mm -hmm. Rise from the grave. We don't have too many good creatures to that, so we'll probably cut that for now. Knight of the Tusk on the top end. Like, we don't have too many big threats, so it's nice to have a couple. Vampire Sovereign is really good. So we could cut a couple on the three curve, I think. Most likely. Uh, You could wiki, but what do the colors mean? So the colors... In magic, there's uh, five colors. Each one is like indicates a different style of magic. So black is like you know graveyard zombies, like dark magic. White is like order justice. So you can like mix them together to create de certain decks. Uh, it's just like it's each each one is pretty stylistically different. Really do want to put in that other knight's pledge because we have like a really mean early curve actually. Doom to center, infernal scarring. We're gonna keep that in for sure. Walking corpse isn't the best, but we're trying to like be really quick here. And curve out. I could cut like one of the big knights of the tusk. They're a little bit clunky. Do we want to just curve out here on the vampire sovereign on our five curve? I think one knight of the tusk is pretty good for the late game. Uh, the dwarven priest we're gonna cut. So now we have four more cards to get rid of. Um, pack beast, luminous bonds. We have to keep those guys. Tough guys. It's pretty tough. Walking Corpse, I mean, it's not the best card, but I, I I would like to have a couple two drops to play. That's kind of why it's there. It, it definitely sucks to cut Rise from the Grave, but again, if my opponent's just playing junky creatures, you're you're spending five mana to get rid of, like... Yeah. So, let's see. The Sigiled Sword of Valoran is, like, the only good card we have in our deck, like, in terms of actual, like, like magic standards. Marauder's Axe, pretty damn good. Explosive Apparatus is a decent cheap removal option. I feel like your opponent can see it coming, but it's still not bad. Okay. 
I think we just... Hiromancer's Cage is so good. Inspired Charge is a win condition. But it's kind of a win more card. It's not going to like win us the game, so I think we can cut that one down for now. Two-Headed Zombie's good. It's a menace. It's a win condition. We don't want to play with 43 cards. We want to be like pretty high in sight here. Yeah, we can get rid of the Explosive Apparatus. I think we have more cost-efficient removal now. How to play this game, America. Explain, please. I'll probably do a separate video on like how to play Magic. You, you guys are going to see. Right now, I'm like building my draft deck, which is a deck from cards I just picked randomly from packs. So it's... uh, We have the trusty Pack Beast, who I think is pretty good. He gets us back our sword in case they have removal. Good at Zombie. Star Crown, Stag... Oh, there's so many good cards here. Knights of the Tusk, I think we can cut for now. We're going to be like pressuring early, like hard and fast. Maybe let's put in uh, another Knight's Pledge. We'll put in another Knight's Pledge, although now two is fine. The Pegasus, we're pretty heavy on the three curve, so let's actually cut one Pegasus. Okay. Now we got our deck down to 40. Now we play. So we go until we lose three matches. I don't know if it's matches or if it's just like one best of ones. I think it's a best of three. You can use a lot of burn spells, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Thank you guys for joining tonight, by the way. I know it's kind of out of the blue, so it's good to see some familiar faces. It's mostly Americans, I'm sure. A couple of brave Europeans at like 5 a.m. Uh, so that hand is not very good. We kind of got screwed here. We only got... Uh, so we're going to mulligan. Wow, that's not good. Okay, we're just going to keep it. I don't, I don't think we can afford to mulligan anymore. So we got basically got a really sh shoddy hand. Hopefully my opponent has to mulligan. We're going to keep it because at least we get to scry. So that's going to go on the bottom. We basically need to draw planes. Yeah, this is really not not great, guys. We we don't even have our second color. They okay, found our I could have I could have mulliganed again. Oh, we get a child of the night though, so at least we get something on curve. So he played something that gains him life. I played a creature, which we're gonna be really conservative and equip with the sword of Valera on here. Okay, it's it's actually not like terrible. So typically you want to attack first to force your opponent's hand. We get a damage. Two to him. We gained some life. Second main phase, we played the Sigiled Sword of Valeron, which is going to give us a pretty mean attack next turn. We're actually going to be coming in for a four. He's in not in the best shape now, because if this thing gets rolling, it's like impossible to stop it. Not impossible. He's in green, so he has plenty of stuff to kill artifacts. Okay. He plays the Death Touch Basilisk, which I don't really care about, because I guess we're playing mono black. So we pay the mana. We equip. This, is, this sword is so good. Like, we're going to kill his creature and get a free knight. It's so good. He's gonna block, which is fine. We just love, like, we still come out ahead, right? We gain life, we damage him, and we get another creature. So we netted some card advantage there. And if he does actually kill the sword and we draw planes, we can bring it back. So he's desperate. Yeah, he's trying to draw draw an answer. Yeah, it's okay. It wasn't a complete. And there was our plane. So now it's like a pretty normal game. So we're gonna equip the sword to our knight. See how good this thing is? It's crazy. We keep equipping it. We're going to beat him in the face for four, for one, two. And we get another knight. It's just like, uh... Guys, we actually have... If we can get him to three, we can uh, kill him with the Vampire Sovereign. Okay, he's, he's playing the, uh, the, beast, the Beastie Boys. So I think we're going to keep the pressure on him. I mean, he's going to block, but we're going to get another knight, and it's going to get some damage in. Yeah, I think we're going to attack. So he's going to block, but it triggers another knight attacking, so he's going to block the biggest source. We're going to lose a token. Like, who cares? And then it's going to be a lot to the dome. Then we're going to play a Vampire Sovereign in our second main. Ping him for three. We go to 29, and now he's he's almost in the danger zone. We can equip the sword to our Vampire, who's flying, which means his, his big Bailoth here can't actually block it. Yeah, blue is really good. I mean, each... It depends on, like, in, like, in vintage formats, blue is by far probably one of the best colors and like, Legacy and, like, all that. But in, like, the newer formats, it's more well-balanced. He's going to attack us. We're not going to block. We have, like, a million life, so. Then he's going to play this. It creates a little flying token. Oh, that's pretty funny. Clever girl. So, we are going to get a little bit crunk right now. So, first things first. Uh, let's equip this. Sword to, uh... He does have three mana open now. We could equip... I don't think he has an answer for our flyer, to be honest. 
So we're gonna buff this guy up. I mean, he's gonna be able to block. I hate to put everything on this one guy here. I should have split it up, probably. That was a little newbie of me. Uh, let's go ahead and... Because that puts him in lethal next turn. So let's actually cancel that. Let's attack. We're going, going to the house. We're going to create a knight. It's going to force his hand. If he has any removal, now's the time. He's probably going to jump these. He has to block the flyer, so he's going to take two. I could have put him down a little lower, but... That's fine. And second main... Oh, we're going to end our turn, actually. Because the higher blade in my hand, he has an ability called uh, Flash. Which means that I can flash him in uh, my opponent's turn, which is really good. <laughs> Vampire counts versus uh, Bretonia? I don't think so. Okay, so it's his attack phase. In combat, he's not going to attack. My t so now I'm going to do this on his turn still. Flash it in. He has a moment to respond if he likes. He has a ton of mana open, so... And he's going to return it to my... Oh, he's returning the sword to my hand. Okay. Not going to save him, I don't think. Yeah, that's game. He surrendered. Because I could have just buffed up all my stuff and killed him. So, yeah. So, right there, we were able to win our first game in the draft. Yeah, buddy. We did it. And now you can see we're earning this prize. So, it costs 750 I think, to get into this draft. So, if we win six, we get our, our prize money back. I used to draft a lot, though. I'm pretty familiar with this format when I was, uh, when I was in college and stuff. Many moons ago. No mana screw. Yeah, we came back from that, even though we had to mulligan. No. It was a good start. I think so, Bubba Bricks. I think so, my friend. God damn, this mana situation. Like we this this hand, if we drew it into a planes, would be like a god hand. He would just have no chance of winning. But as it stands now, it's just like it's a dumpster fire. Yeah. We're gonna have to uh we're gonna have to mulligan. Why? Why? Yeah, we're gonna keep it. And just and we get to scry at least, and we're on the draw, so. Uh that sucks. Both games we had to mull. Don't I get to scry? When I mulligan? Oh, I think it's after he does his thing. No. I thought I was supposed to get a scry there. That's why I kept it. That's kinda stupid. Anyone know how much a draft is? At the game store? Uh, like 10 bucks usually. The axe is going on bottom, because we, we need lands. Okay, so he plays that. We have a really good turn one play with the Novice Knight. And if we can get a, uh, into the Infernal Scarring, we're going to be really good. Alright, a little limp dick start. Not going to lie, guys. Yeah, it's like 10 or 15 bucks usually. Yeah. And the cool part about drafting is, is like, it's it kind of takes away, because people don't get to, like, there is skill to it, but... Okay, that's... Oh man, that's like the best draw we could have gotten. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and enchant this creature, which means uh, he's enchanted now. He can coming in hot, boys. Pretty good. Drafting is good because like if you're new to the game, like you don't have to play against someone who has a prepared deck. It's like everyone's playing with haggard decks. So, oh, he's mana screwed too. I think. Yeah, he's playing a novice knight. That's funny. He's probably gonna double block me if I attack. I would imagine. Aha! But we're gonna get even fatter. We're putting on that knight's pledge. <laughs> Six five coming in. You gonna take it? Ooh, down to ten. In draft, in drafting, <clears throat> if you play like tabletop. Sorry, I'm like I'm fighting a bit of a throat thing. You get to keep. Uh, you get to keep all your cards. Oh, look at him. He's gonna knight's pledge too. I'm tempted to take that trade. Oh, but he's attacking with this one? He doesn't have Vigilance. He wants to race. Oh, this is going to be brutal. You ready for this? So we're going to cast Luminous Bond so this guy can't attack or block. We're going balls deep to the face. Come on. Okay, he's at four. So the Novice Knight now can't attack or block. And he gives up. We're going 2-0, baby. What a start. Look at that. We're getting all the goodies right now. All right, guys. I'm going to use the restroom real quick, and then uh, we'll keep going.
All right, guys, I'm back. Yeah, my advice for anyone who wants to draft, just pick like cost efficient creatures. And by that, I mean creatures that like they're, the cost of their mana to like the ratio of their power or abilities is pretty good. And then removal spells. If you do that, you're going to be in okay shape. Yeah. One man crusade, I know. Yeah, it's definitely tricky at first. Okay, so this is the opposite. It's a much slower hand, but my opponent's going first. I'm on the draw. I think I'm going to keep it and hope I draw because typically you don't want like four lands. Three is the sweet spot, but uh, considering it's draft, I'm just going to go for it. I don't want to mulligan into like a one land hand. Yeah, like I just got like a prize basically, which allows me to get uh, like a pack. I'm just going to keep it. It's, it's a little risky, but it's okay. Just like helicopters flying around outside yeah if you guys have any questions about magic let me know i can this is a pretty like compared to a total war stream i can like actually sit and like answer your questions a little bit better even total war questions whatever you guys whatever you guys are feeling okay that's still a slow hand we don't have any place till turn four in terms of creatures i mean we can get the sword out okay he's 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 slow too so at least at least neither of us are too fast here Okay, yeah, he's playing uh, Wall of Mist. Interesting choice. Right, let's play the uh, let's play the old sword. And now the best part is, if he has removal for the sword, we can play the trusty Pack Beast, which will remove uh, return the sword to our hand. Yeah. Yeah, you can play Magic Arena for free, and you can you can get some good games in. Like it's it's fun. And a lot of the drafts. Okay, I'll do this thing again. Oh, that's kind of cool. Too bad it didn't do anything for him there. So we're gonna put in the uh actually gonna put the stag down. Because the stag can actually tap down his defenders. Next turn with the sword a sigiled sword of Valeron. The Thornhide rules. Ferocious beasts of the night. So we can get pretty jacked right now, guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pay one and two. We're gonna put the Knight's Pledge on the stack. I don't think he has removal or he would have used it already. We're gonna put the Erect Sword on there. And this stack's coming in for a whopping seven to the dome piece. Uh, so we get to tap down a creature too. I'll oh, probably tap down the wolves so he can't kill me, yeah. So the wolves will get tapped down. Unfortunately, he's gonna kill the Knight. It is what it is, but I don't know. I'm curious if he'll block with the Wall of Mist. No, he's gonna take the free kill, which is smart. Oof, seven to the face. That is nasty. Uh, so a very dissatisfied dwarf says, my ignorance in this game is going to give me a hard time. Yeah, try it, man. It's fine. You can't play with your friends quite yet. It's still in the beta phase, but uh, eventually they're going to have like friend lists and you can play your buddies and stuff. <clears throat> uh, uh, okay. Oh, he's going to put a 1-1 counter on the creature. He's going to buff up. Yeah, yeah, the Thornhide Wolves. I wonder if he's going to try and race me. He could. He could actually swing and then... Uh, I feel like he's going to keep the Skyrider back and maybe attack the Wolves. Could kill the Wolf. It's not worth it, though. It's not worth it at all. He's thinking about attacking right now. Oh, both, huh? Okay. Now I can... Fine. Because now I'm going to net cards. If he doesn't play a 2-2 or a 2-3 or something that can kill my token, I'm going to net value on him. Uh, so combat. We're going to go to combat first. He has three green, which means he could have a uh, destroy artifact spell or something. We're going to attack. Stag gets to tap things down when it attacks. We're going to tap his wall, so he's forced to take nine damage to the face. Hey, thank you, uh, Nish Kish. Nish oh, man. Nish Kish. Appreciate it, man. Is magic for nerds? <laughs> well, yeah, everything I do is pretty nerdy. Um, we're going to play the zombie. He has menace, too. I'm pretty sure my opponent's in some serious trouble here. So we can jump with the knight. Or will you just jump the, the wolf? He, he better. He needs to have, like, a bomb in his hand. Some sort of, like, mass removal spell or something. Okay. Try to. Pretty good. I am I am being flooded with lands, though, so if he's able to stabilize somehow, we could be in some big old trouble. Because if he doesn't attack with the Thornhide Wolves, I'm just going to tap them down uh, during his defensive phase. 
Okay, so he's putting a counter on something. Maybe... Oh, he didn't have enough mana for that. Okay. So... So I could actually put this on the, the uh, zombie, which isn't a bad idea because then he can't kill it. It's always better to like kind of like split up your resources rather than put them all in one place. So yeah, we're going to put it on the two-headed zombie. And <laughs> draw a saber. You're wrong, Mole Spaghetti. It is for heroes. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to swing all in. And then we get to trigger the stag. Tap the wolf so he can't defend himself. We get another token. And he concedes. Black white enchantment. All day, baby. All day. All day. Yeah, so we're 3-0 right now in this draft. And we actually are getting some good prizes too. Right now we're gonna get uh the most packs you can get in this. Yeah, two at the end, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's where we want to get. We'd like to get the six wins so we can earn back our uh, what we invested, preferably. Because <clears throat> then I can do another stream in a couple days without having to spend five bucks. Some stretches. Got to keep the hands warm. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks. The stag is really good, yeah. The, the tap down is brutal. It... it Especially if you're on the, the, the aggressive side of things, like it really puts your opponent in a precarious situation. All right, here we go. Uh, not the best opening hand, not the worst. We're gonna keep it. We have a turn one play with some removal. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a similar situation we were in before, but if we draw like the sword or anything like that to buff our Rustwing Falcon, we're easily gonna roll over our opponent probably. Unless he has like, we haven't seen too much red. Okay, we got a black deck here. Other land is not what we need, guys. But we're playing the Falcon. Not yet. I will, Bubba Bricks. Yeah, yeah, I will. Her and I have been painting 40k mostly. That's been our big hobby. Child of the Night's pretty good. Okay, so we're like playing control now. Fortunately, he's just gonna gain back whatever. Yeah, that was stupid. I should have just blocked his uh, Child of the Night. Okay. So. It's just a lifelinker though, so if I can play the uh, two cards, uh, oh, I can gladly oblige. I have plenty of lands for it to throw away. Eh, good mine route though. Uh, the most tanky color is probably like green, in terms of its like toughness and stuff. Look, more lands. How convenient. Um, we're gonna pass the turn. We will trade this. I don't mind trading this, because then whatever he plays next, we're just going to pin down with this. Luminous Bonds. He's in a, better, a bit of a better situation, though, than I am, I would say. We've drawn a pretty weak, uh, weak opening hand here. <clears throat> but we trade a 1 drop for a 2 drop, so... Okay. Empire Sovereign's pretty good. We're just hanging out. Nothing in my graveyard I want to get back. The Pack Mule's really good. Um, but it's just Artifact, I guess, so... Maybe we play this guy? Yeah, I think we need something on the board. We can't like fully yield the tempo to our opponent. And tempo means kind of like momentum, right? So. Yeah. There's all kinds of big green monsters and sea, you know, behemoths. Those giant worms that are very similar to like Dune, things like that. Hey, so he's stuck on three. So we actually might just start winning this now. We're gonna play this in the Sovereign. We're just gonna ping him for another three and heal us for three, which is quite good. Not bad, guys. Not bad. We're off to a pretty good draft today. Here we go. Interesting fact, when I first started doing uh, YouTube, I, I actually wanted to be a Magic the Gathering YouTuber, but then Total War Warhammer was like announced, and I was like, oh. Yeah, and of course, the rest is history. I don't know if he can come back, guys. He's He is not sitting pretty. Because we have three removal spells in hand. Whatever he plays is getting put in a cage. And he can block with that, Child of the Night. I don't know if those are even worth it. So let's put Infernal Scarring on uh, the trusty pack mill. And then combat, we're, we're gonna save our removal. Like we don't need to use it on either of those guys. 
So now this guy's out of range for the Child of the Night. He can't get past my three toughness. Uh, so he's going to have to jump or he's going to be almost dead. And I think we're going to cast Luminous Bonds on the uh, Child of the Night at this point. So he can't swing back in and uh, gain any life because it does have lifelink. So. Okay, so let's see what he's got here. I don't know. I feel like he's going to be running out of on fumes here unless he can like... He has a, a, a hard removal spell for the Vampire Sovereign. He might be okay. I think. That's probably his best bet. Good question for our, those of you guys here in chat. Would you guys like to have like music on while we do these drafts? Some like low-key music in the background. Okay, he has, a, he has a chump blocker in there. I, can, I think I can actually just outright kill him here. This is like really risky to do, but um, I can just like... Exile both these and swing for lethal if he doesn't have any answer. So let's just do that. Fortune favors the bold, you know. Oh, I don't have enough for the Iromancer's Cage. Oh, I screwed up. I thought I had one more mana than I did. Oh, well, it's okay. Because I, I could have killed him if I had one more mana. I just... Moment. Just wasn't thinking. He's going to block with the Neophyte. He has to. And then he's going to take three to the face. We're just trying to... That was like... I shouldn't have done that. Damn. Okay, so he's going to block, gain some life. Fine. Down to four. You can only play like one creature. So whatever he plays, we can uh, remove with the Iron Mancer's Cage. Hey, Sotek. What's going on, man? We're doing a magic draft. We're uh, got a pretty good record right now. So he has a removal spell or, or else it's game. I would imagine. So we are going to play the Harpy right now. So there's a reason we're playing the Harpy, because the Harpy I can sacrifice a permanent, or a creature, to buff him, so if he kills... So he's killing something in response, see? Which is a good play, before I get the Harpy out there, but... I did draw something off the Infernal Scarring, so that thing in my graveyard allowed me to draw. So now we just buff up the Vampire Sovereign, and we swing to the face, and... the Steven, It's like the Steven Seagal Karate Chop, right to the neck, the neck snap. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, the great lore master of Sotex here. Lovely Lady Turin hanging out somewhere in the living room as well. I hear her about. So guys, we are uh, doing pretty good. We're 4-0 right now. We play till you get three losses, so we have a lot of cushion. So we're going forward into uh, game five here. Undefeated at the moment. So hopefully we can uh, keep our bearing. Get that, that sweet, sweet goodness. Okay, so we got a one drop. This is a pretty good hand. If we draw into any of our enchantment buffs, like it's going to be a bad day for our opponent. We got a one drop, no two drop, but he's going first, so we're on the draw, so definitely going to keep that hand. All right. We're playing against the Noki 5. Steven Seagal paint. Yeah, I know. It's pretty funny. Shadow. Shadow. Got a lick in there. Okay, so we get some removal. Not the best. Get our knight. Now, if we do draw, like, an uh, enchantment buff next turn, like a knight's pledge or an infernal scarring, it's going to, like, put a huge, huge amount of pressure on our opponent. Okay, he plays the uh, omen. Seeker, which lets him scry. Pretty good. No heavy tempo this game for us. This is going to be probably a bit of a grindy match. Yeah, we, we're, we're going to be... I mean, at least we're get hitting, like, a decent tempo curve of getting, like, something every turn, but... Uh, nothing terribly devastating, really. Ooh, okay. You see, this is something that... Ugh. God, that sucks. Okay, so... Okay, at least we have an answer for this thing right now. So we're gonna... Okay, it gets 2-2 and gains life. We're putting that, that lady in a cage. So the angel can't do anything. We're actually gonna attack with our 1-1, because it has lifelink, so he's gonna block, but at least we're netting life. Urethron, it's going quite good. We are uh, we are undefeated, so I think we're 4-0 or 5-0. I can't remember. Yeah. No, I'm good. I don't mind the white noise. Okay, he's playing three colors. So three colors is pretty ambitious for drafts. So I would usually recommend two. Uh, he might still be able to beat us, so I mean, you never know. I mean, he obviously has some really good cards in his deck. Like the Resplendent Angel. I don't have anything like that, unfortunately. Luminous Bonds, more removal. Oh my goodness. Um, 
So, he's probably going to attack next turn, I think. We're going to flash in the Hired Blade. We're going to see if we can bait him into an attack, and then we're going to flash in the Blade to defend with. And if he doesn't do anything, we'll just end step it anyways. Yeah, he gets the stag, which is fine. We have Luminous Bonds for it. I kind of want to wait for something bigger, though. Yeah, he's 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 off to a pretty fast start here. Thankfully, we had the removal for the uh, Angel, so hopefully he attacks. I hope he does, so we can get some value off the blade. Okay, he's not. Uh, end step, we're going to flash this in on his turn. So then our mana comes untapped, right? And we can, we can do some more, so... We are going to play the... Uh, we're going to play our own stag. Oh man, no attackers. This is like, we need an enchantment to kind of like set things off a little bit here. Yeah, tricolor is easier on Guilds of Ravnica because you have all the, you know, the multicolor land and, you know, filters and things. Well, not filters, shock lines. You know what I'm saying. Uh, so let's see what he's got. I'm, I'm going to hold the bonds. If I have to get the stag later, I will. But like right now, we're basically just in a standoff. Flying creature is pretty good. I might have to deal with that sooner than later. Okay, so we get that. Still a pretty limp situation here. He's just going to start attacking me every turn with the Aven Wind Mage. Let's give it Let's give it one turn. So we're going to play the Loxodon Line Breaker to get some more bodies out there. And we're going to pass. And if he doesn't like play any bigger threats in the next turn or two, the Divination is pretty good here for him. And it triggers that. We will have to lock down the Avon Mage. I'm hoping the Resplendent Angel is his best card. I don't know what he's flashing red for. It could be something really good, too. So the fact that he has, like, a little red mana. It's fine. We take three. No problem. We draw another planes, which is not what we want, but it's okay. No attacks, really. I mean, we could attack the Line Breaker, but he'll just double block us with these and get value. We're just going to pass. If he doesn't play anything good this turn... Okay, that's why you save it. That's why you're patient. Because, yeah, because this is a fat 6-6 six, six world beater, right? So... Whenever another... Whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create... Ooh, that's gross. Hopefully he doesn't have any other dragons. Alright, we're putting him in a cage as well. So now we just need to... Uh, do I attack with anyone? No, I think I just gotta like take that beating from this uh, this mage up here. <laughs> uh, Heraldry, you missed uh, the first five game, four four or five games of the draft. We haven't lost yet. This might be our first loss because uh, our opponent has like bonkers cards here, and he's playing well. Uh, whenever it becomes a target of a spell. Oh wow, that's really good. That's really good. You definitely need some tempo. Like, we need some good enchantments here to start attacking with. We have so much stuff, so many random creatures. And all we have is the trusty pack beast. Yeah, there's a new set out. Um, okay, so he's making his creatures unblockable. He's going to tap me down. Uh, I assume he'll tap. Yeah, that's really good. We're in, we're in big trouble. Yeah, and we just keep drawing lands. We might just lose this game. Um, combat. Do you want to attack with anything? Combat, so if we, we can block here, here, and the stag can attack for sure. I think we gotta, because we're gonna lose this at this rate. Yeah, it's pretty much over. But we're gonna try and get some pressure on him, so these guys are tapped. Uh, let's go ahead and tap down his, uh, becomes a target of a spell, so not an ability. I was hoping we could actually kill that. The 2-2, two, two, he's not going to block with that anyways. But we probably want to just tap down one of his uh, his his blocking creatures here. Yeah, Alright, so we're trying to put some pressure on our opponent. Uh, this is... He's in the same draft as us. Yeah. I know, but it's pretty much over. I'm just going to play this and then... Uh, I don't know, maybe he'll just take it at least and it can put us in a spot to... Yeah, he's actually going to block. Yeah, he's trading. He's trading, which is fine. Um, yeah, we want to kill this this guy. That's fine. Uh, so we killed a couple creatures, actually, which is nice. We're going to play our trusty pack mule. Uh, so he has... At the beginning of your... What the hell is this thing? 
Beginning of drop key target opponent. Oh, it mills us. <clears throat> wow, that's really good. Holy shit. He's going to be drawing a lot of cards. Uh, monsters are unlimited in magic, yeah. So he's just attacking with... Oh, he's actually attacking with the stack? Is he going to make it unblockable, though? He, he must. No, he's, he's not? He's going to let us block? That would be really strange if he lets us kill the stack here. Because now we can get a double block, and all he's going to kill is the trusty pack mule. For, like, one of my haggard creatures here. That was kind of a weird decision. We just And we gained some life, too. Okay. And another swamp. We're, so this is, like, a mana flooding. Yeah. we. I don't think we can win, just because this keeps happening. If we drew some decent cards, we might be able to fight back. But the mana flood is really killing us here. Okay, so he milled us for a couple... Yeah, there's, and he did get the sword in the graveyard with the mill. And no worries, yeah. There's no limit. There's no limit. Uh, so the Gearsmith Guardian, oh, that's pretty good. It's 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, so we'll probably just concede this game. This one's over for sure. So that time we kind of got mana flooded, and we got a pretty rough uh, rough start, slow start there. It was a little grindy. So how the draft works in Arena is you play until you get three losses. So we lost one, which is fine. We've won four, so we're four and one right now. Uh, to get our monies back, I mean, and packs, I mean, getting up here is nice. We're still actually doing very well. 450 is quite good. But yeah, ideally we can get the next couple wins and, and close it out. Yeah, Magic's a really fun game, guys. Like, even playing in paper with your buddies, if you have a friend who's, like, interested, just buy, like, two of the pre, uh, pre-constructed pre commander decks. Yeah, the UFC brawl was nuts, man. I don't know all the backstory about, like, the smack talking and, you know, oh, this is a better hand. Ooh, that's a good hand. He doesn't have removal for this Falcon. He's going to be getting the business every turn. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's so good and tasty. <laughs> Don't worry how... Yeah, that that, that that one wasn't winnable, so... I, it would have just wasted people's time. Uh, so we're going to play the Falcon. And from here, we're probably going to enchant it on the next turn. Playing red, so he could have burn. He actually has a burn spell here. That's really... But if we can get around it, come on. Okay, yeah, no response. He's taking three to the face from this angry bird right now. Yeah. Okay, so... Gonna burn us for two. It gets to shoot target player or planeswalker, which is fine. I don't... Okay, I could Luminous Bond it, but I don't think I'm going to. They boss me. Back to me. Oh, God. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. The damage, he's taking three. We're gonna play the Sigiled Sword. Which, if we get this sword equipped to the bird, just imagine like a falcon like running in with like hanging a sword from its little like paws or its little talons. That's so funny. He He's playing black though, so he could very easily have removal. But if this sword gets online, I'm pretty sure he's toast. Like, I don't think he can win if I'm able to get this thing rolling. Okay, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna equip the sword to the bird. So the bird literally is dragging a sword. It is a random stream, guys. We're doing a full draft, so however long that takes is how long the stream's gonna go. Now that sword, when it uh, triggers, it gives our guy a knight, it makes him vigilant, and it gives us a token. It's And it's attacking, it's so good. Like, my opponent is potentially like dead next turn, which is crazy. Like, how f it's only turn four. That draws, nuts. okay, he's gonna shock the, that's like, he's having to use an actual card on the token, which is just, and I could easily draw another buff spell and finish him here. He can't attack. He's attacking with the menace creature, which makes sense. But he he could. The thing is, if I block, and he has another shock in hand, he can kill my bird, and and the jig is up. We're not going to block. We're going to take it, which is a little dicey, but I think it's worth it. Uh, so now we're going to combat. We're going to attack. We're getting our two-two token. Oh, I actually had lethal there. Oh, I screwed up. I screwed up. I could have uh, blasted his guy with Lich's caress. It's okay. Um, then we're gonna play this, uh... So I, I think I could have killed him there. Yeah, I just, so basically what I should have done is use that spell to destroy his blocker and then... I mean, granted, if he was holding a shock, it wouldn't matter anyways. I think we got this. Yeah, he said good game. Yeah. I made a little mistake there, but it's okay. We were we were in good enough shape. I'm a little tired. It's been a, been a long day. I actually recorded uh, four Total War videos today. Ooh, and we get a pack. 
We'll open it. We'll open the packs together afterwards, whatever we get in prizes. So we are five and one right now. Balls deep. That sword is so good and tasty. I love it. It's, uh, it's such a fun, fun uh, card. In, in constructed play, it's a little bit slow, but in drafting, it's like one of those cards that steamrolls people. Granted, I mean, I'm sure my opponents have cards that are just as good. Five and one, baby. Oh, this is a not a good hand. I mean, we get him on turn two. I think we mulligan. Yeah, that's that's actually a lot better. Yeah. Oh, oh, just <laughs> just nipple rubs. Italian Spartacus and I are recording our head-to-head uh, -to -head tomorrow. Damn, the sword is our next card. That's so good and tasty. Oh, Doyle rules! I, lo I love that uh, that movie. So typically in Magic, you always want to attack before you play like your second spell for the turn because it forces your opponent to react to that card before. So they don't have as much information, basically. Um, this is a mean start. He has some defenses here, though, so that's pretty good for him. But... We're going to combat. We're just attacking with the bird. And the sword. If he can't remove the sword here, I think he's in big trouble. Yeah, Italian and I... Oh, he's playing white-black, too. Like the same deck almost. Gundog 92. All right, we only have land, so we're pretty much all in here. Bird is getting the sword again in its clutches, and uh, unfortunately, he has the resources to kill my token. He might just jump it with the Daybreak Captain. Yeah, he's just gonna do that. So he's gonna gain a life. He's gonna take two. It's fine, but we keep the token, which is so good. I mean, like we're growing a board, but. If he has removal, we're in some trouble because we only have planes, guys. Uh, what did he play here? Did he he play Luminous Bonds? That's okay because the cool part about equipments is, is you can just switch them on to other things. So um, we're going to just put it on our, our Knight token here. He's a 4-2 now. And then we are actually going to buff the uh, zombie, the split glove. So the zombie's now a 4-4. We're gonna attack here. It's so, that sword is so good. It's so good. He's gonna kill that guy, but it doesn't really matter. Cause like we can just re-equip it next turn to someone. I don't know though, but he's got five cards, four cards. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, I discard a card. Okay, he can have my planes. That's I lose two life. Oh, no. No. Ah. Sword's going on the, the dude. Gonna keep that value train running. And uh, now we just attack it for eight and we get another token. So good. Let's see. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I could the knight already has vigilance, but yeah. I just kinda wanna like split the power up so he doesn't so easily have like a, a retort. I'm not really worried about his offense right now, so but yeah, you have a really good point, toe face. Top face. The top ace or toe face? Plays a creature, gives a step 1 1. It's all in the turn. He attacks. Uh, can we block? I'll get vigilance, which is a little unfortunate. If I block, I at least kill it. I mean, he's going to block with the angel next turn, anyways. No, I, I don't think we do. It's not that much damage, to, to be honest. Ooh, that's so good. So, I mean, we could just give the zombie 6-6. Six, six. So if we put him up to toughness 4, he has to double block on the uh, knight here. Put him up to 6 here. He's just going to chump. going to kill the knight. But if the knight gets it, let's see. So he becomes a 6-4. He could then double block, but that's 6 damage. We could get a 2-for-1. I think that's okay. Let's just do it. we go. You get another token attacking. Getting pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, there's so many. I, I don't know if that was the correct play, but I'm just kind of like trying to get the game over with quickly. Uh, so we want to kill this thing first. Yeah, we're going to kill both those. That's a two for one. Oof, that's so good. That's why we did that. Then second main phase, we're just going to equip the sword to the other knight we just had. And then just pass her. Oh, Tyler, don't worry about it, man. You'll learn over time. 
Okay, that's a pretty good creature. <laughs> the Bog Stomper. Ooh, the Pegasus Corsair is pretty good. So, he has this like meaty body, right? That we can... Uh... So, we're going to put the sword on, uh, on the zombie. So, at least we can kill this thing. I mean, he's going to trade probably, which is okay. And we'll go to combat. We'll attack with everything. We're going to get another token. Now, he has to block the zombie or he's dead. So he could chump it and then kill one of the tokens, but he's he's gonna trade the big zombie, which I'm okay with. And he's gonna take uh gonna take two. One technically, so he'll go to four. And then we can equip the uh, sword to the Pegasus next turn, which is pretty strong. Pretty good. Too OP for someone. <laughs> it is. Oh, he gets a flyer and gains some life. This guy is clawing on for dear life here. Oh, that's so mean. We have six mana. That's so mean. Oh man. Okay. I mean, if you drop that, then uh, yeah, and he surrenders. Ooh, that was mean. That was mean, boys. All right, we're getting there. Uh, we're getting them sweet prizes. I mean, now we have enough to buy multiple packs, which is pretty exciting. And we've gotten our gems back. So we paid seven fifty to play. Um, we just need the one more. It's been quite a journey with you guys here. And Darkest Mike, to answer your question, Italian Spartacus wouldn't want that. He likes the, the fierce cockfight, even though he seems stressed. So a top deck means that it's like a card you draw right off the top. So it's like it wasn't in your hand. You just drew it and got like lucky, right? So I top decked it, which means I just drew it out of nowhere, like off the top. That is a pretty good hand. If I draw one more land, this is a disgusting hand, actually. Because I can one, two, into three. Oh, that's so good. That is a nasty hand. Well, I didn't greed draft this time. I drafted trying to win. I didn't like pick the rares just because I want them. Uh, you guys, yeah, I'll probably stream magic every couple nights. If you guys, if you guys enjoy this, then gladly, I will oblige. So the novice knight is a cool card. It's a two, three for one, which is insane value already. But it has defender, which means it can't attack unless. Uh, Unless you have it enchanted or equipped, uh, is that it, it's the condition for this card, right? So okay, he's playing. He has some goblins. They're pretty good. We're gonna knight's pledge. Unfortunately, guys, we're missing our third land drop, which uh, isn't the best situation. We're attacking for four. He might chump. I would like if he chumped actually, but he's just gonna take it to the face. Uh, green has a lot of enchantment removal, but most people don't main board that because it's like uh, it's usually a sideboard. And in this draft format we're playing, it's... Okay, he's got a 4-2, so he could triple block me now, feasibly, feasibly. Now, if I draw, like, something, a land, for example, I can simply uh, put Luminous Bonds on him, which is what we're going to do. And attack or block, and then we just go to the face again. That's so good. Uh, Harold, he says, Turin, need some of them land development. Also, yes, please. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, I have heard about the DLC for, uh, for what's it called, for... Three kingdoms. I mean, I don't really care. It's, it's, it's free, right? If you just buy the game in like the first week. So for most people who want to play anyways, it's like, whatever, you're still getting it. I, I don't know. Like I've never, DLC is never great, but I mean like the way Total War's done DLC, I love like when they give me a new DLC, I'm like, hell yeah, give me that sweet vampire coast. Um, <sighs> I want to Luminous Bonds him again. I think what we do here is we actually put down the, uh, the elk. And we just play defensively, because I don't want to lose the Novice Knight. So we'll take whatever he does, then we'll bond him next turn, and that's where the business comes in. Oh, uh, the hair's not different. Ra uh, rags, it's not different. It's just... Yeah, I just come it differently, or I slept funny, and it became, like, screwed up. Yeah, the hair is the same as it's always been. Alright, so... I think we play the Ravenous Harpy. We play the Pack Mule. Can't play the Vampire Sovereign yet. It's not worth locking down the Ogre because he's just going to be hanging out. Yeah, we'll play the Pack Mule. It has a bigger body. Uh, no attackers. Because I don't want him to block the Goblin and kill the Knight because then I'm just kind of in a weird position. Like, I have a powerful character. Let's just play defensive. We have the resources. Oh, I think they could do... Yeah, it, it's basically a reprised pacifism, yes. So he plays a Catalyst Elemental, which is cool. Uh, so here we can actually get him pretty good. We can get him with the Luminous Bonds on the Ogre. And then we can swing in with uh, our both our creatures. 
He could double block uh, or sacrifice the Catalyst Elemental to get two red to burn something. But either way, not, none of those options are good for him. So we get some really good value to the face. Uh, he's almost dead. Vampire Sovereign is like so mean too. In uh, draft format, it's really good. <clears throat> so he's up to four mana. Both both of his ogres are pacified essentially with our uh, luminous bonds. No, I don't like MTGO. Yeah, I don't want to spend money on that. It just seems like clunky and buggy. Okay, so he plays the fire elemental, which is pretty cool. Um, and we could trade for that. Play the harpy. I think we. I think we do. A t I think we do the trade. We're gonna play the harpy. Hmm. See, it's just attack. I don't mind this trade actually because he's gonna have to lose the uh, big elemental and he's gonna have to take two probably. So he's doing that trade, which is fine. I don't mind that. Then we're gonna play the. Uh, we want to go wider. Now, Vampire Sovereign gives us pressure on him next turn, like almost lethal, because he'll go down to five here. Yeah, I think that's the better play. So it does three damage and heals me for three when it comes back. Um, We will see uh, Hello, the Crow. Perhaps, maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah, so he plays another Catalyst Elemental. Not much to ramp to in his hand, I would imagine. So first we're going to play the Harpy so that if he does have some tricks we can sacrifice something in response. And uh, we are going to attack. Yeah, and he concedes. Okay. Pretty good. Did we just win the draft? Did we beat the game, the final boss? Oh, I think we did? No, okay, we get a free card. <laughs> what is this thing? We have mirror. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, it's only you control though, that's not bad. Okay, so we just beat the draft. We won seven games and lost one. Uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that neat? So claim prize. We get 950 gems, which means we could easily do another draft. We actually netted gems, which is cool. Uh, we got a couple packs for free. And then um, we have some packs in the store too. So, wow, that's really cool. We did it. We did it, boys. So we have some packs to open. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, come on, give us that sweet, sweet goodness. What do we get here? Chaos Wand. Oh, this is pertinent, isn't it? Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, Rags. Yeah, it was good. Target opponent exiles a card from the top of the library until you exile. Oh, that's hilarious, Chaos Wand. Oh my god. Not very good, but it's fun. Yes, thank you, thank you, guys. I just pulled two Chaos Wands. The Chaos Gods smile upon this stream. But that is a terrible card. That makes me slightly depressed. Ugh. Yeah, and we got a pack from Ravnica, which is uh, which is pretty fun. So let's see what we got here. And we also got a wild card. Come on. Oh yeah, that's. This is probably one of the best things you can pull. Uh, because it means you can craft any gold card you want. Anything. It's uh, it's called a wild card. So that's pretty good. I'm happy about. That. Uh, so let's see what drafts we can plan for the future. So. As far as events go, we have a constructed event, sealed guilds of Ravnica's. It's, this is like a super fun one. Uh, with this one, check out the prize. If you if you like perfect it, you get twenty two hundred gems in three packs. Sweet. But this one, you get six packs, I believe, and you craft a forty card deck out of those. So it's not a draft. It's it's like somewhat similar. Um, God, chaos gods are cackling at me. Uh, do you guys want to craft some? Crack a couple packs with the gold we earned? I think we can. Because the gems are what you need to play the uh Let's do it. Let's let's buy some packs, boys. How much are the course at? Under a thousand two. We're gonna get two packs with the gold we got. Crack some more. Yeah, they, it's very true. Come on. Ritual of Suit is a pretty good control card for black, so that's actually quite good. And we got a silver and a uh, two wild cards there, so that's pretty good. I'm happy. A third Chaos one, dude, I would be so sad. It just, like, appears in the pack of this other set. Under Realm Lich. The mythic. Uh, if you would draw a card, instead look at the top three of your library. Put one of them into your hand and one... Oh, and it gains indestructible and tap it. Oh, that's kind of cool. 
Doesn't seem like the best card, but um invert and invent. Okay. Alright guys, uh I think that's it for tonight. Or do you guys want to play like one or two more games, just casual games? We can do like one or two more casual games, I think. Because we have a couple people joining, so let's actually go here. I wanted to edit this deck a little bit. Um take out the uh the whisper agent. And the uh, the thief of sanity. There was a creature I wanted to put in here. The Night Veil Predators. So let's get the uh, the Thief of Sanity and the Whispering Guy and we'll we'll craft one more of these now that we have the cards for it. Why is it loading? How oh, did it crash? Let's see. Hopefully, I uh... know oh, it's still good. Okay. So we have two Night Veil Predators in the deck now. We could craft some rares, like get some lands for this deck to try and like fine tune it even more. That would actually probably be pretty good, but I'm going to save the rares because this deck's like mostly done. I mean, I need four Thought Erasures. Actually, I could craft a couple of those. But I think I'm going to save it. Oh, does, don't I have 60 cards in there? Oh, where's my... Why is the second Night Veil Predator not in there? Is it a different one or something? Because it says I should have two. That, did that just, like, bug out on me there? Anyways, okay, that's kind of weird. So... We will play a couple games with our Surveil deck, which uh, we didn't have such a good time with last time, but... Uh, so let's use our Surveil deck. This is a blue-black deck. It's a Demir deck. It's pretty good. So this is like a casual play. Yeah, it, plus, yeah, it was a rough run last week, but that was pretty pretty random. It, this deck usually does pretty good for itself. Yeah, the Thief is good. I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm going to be crafting another deck, like probably like a Boros deck. I want to have like a few different ones to play with. Um, that is a terrible hand. Oh my god. Although, do we keep it and just like let's go full haggard? Well, again, we're doing it. Okay, that's even worse, but whatever. Screw it. I don't care. Uh, wow, this hand sucks. Ugh. Ugh. Look at all the lands we got. Oh, there's steampunk decks, Heraldy. Oh hell yeah, there is. God, this hand is just such absolute trash. I should have kept that opening hand. Ugh, man. Look at this. At least we get to cast Notion Rain. If he has any sort of aggression, we're just going to lose. Like, anything. Don't play anything. It's the turn. Okay, we got a Night Veil vale Predator, at least. Don't we'll play a Watery Grave. We're going to let it enter tapped. Because it doesn't matter. Oh, man. Okay. Depending on how this goes. We get to cast Notion right in here. The Predator is pretty fun. Usually you want to put him in the graveyard so uh, Lazav can become a copy. Is he playing Dinosaurs? I think he is. Oh my god, we're going to get stomped by Dinosaurs. Well, that's a fun way to end the stream. Uh, We are going to... Reveal 2 and then draw a card. We need to get to like actual meat. So we'll take the Fairy. So not good. The next turn we play the Predator, who at least has Death Touch. So he, I think he's playing Dinosaurs, guys. I'm going to get stomped on by some T-Rexes. Okay, oh god. Oh, I'm so screwed. He, so, Goreclaw, the Terror of Call Simma. This guy uh, is going to give me the business so hard. We can't even dead weight anything. I feel like we need to get some like surveil on the, on the battlefield here. I could like dead weight something, but we're we're screwed. We're screwed, guys. This is we're a hundred percent dead. He's gonna play a fat erect dinosaur right now, and just just go full Jurassic Park on us. Although that's actually a pretty peaceful. Wait, why did that? Oh, when it dies. Okay. Okay, we are not- we're gonna take it, like champs. God damn, that hurts. Okay, so Vraska's Contempt isn't bad. I think we have to save that for the big dinos, though. Do we exile Goreclaw? Yeah, I think we do. We exile him, which gains us some life. And then, I think we attack. We're gonna be taking six. But here we attack, we get to surveil, at least we get to dig for something. So yeah, we got to land for our next card, so we throw that in the graveyard. 
Um, do I want to put minus two, minus two on this guy? I think so. I don't think he has like a huge dinosaur. Yeah, I think we're just going to do this. It's not a good play, but it's like we just need to like slow our opponent down. Because we're just like drawing lands. If he plays a big dino, we're screwed. But if he doesn't, we might stabilize. If we can draw like some like Lazav or something. No, that wouldn't even do anything. We need the Doom Whisperer. I should have mulliganed again. Enter the Meek. Interesting. Okay. And, uh, oh, okay. He plays a, a dinosaur. He's going to draw a card. Okay. So he's going to attack for two, probably. It's fine. I don't mind that. Suddenly, I wish I had kept the dead weight. It's okay. Um, so haggard. Can't even attack him, really. Okay, so we're just going to play play the house and uh, pass turn. I could attack to get the surveil trigger, but I don't want to like lose things right now. I, I can't really afford to. This guy will be pretty good for defending me. No, this isn't a draft game. This is just... We already finished the draft, uh, Jimmy. We we won seven games. Uh, seven wins, one loss. Uh, we got a bunch of free stuff. I'll, maybe I'll do another draft in the next couple nights. Uh, we can do... I think tomorrow we have... Oh, we're, we're screwed. This game's over. We just got the worst hand possible. We just drew, like, all lands and... Okay, what do you got? We'll see what we draw next. I mean... Maybe we could get some sort of removal or something. No, it's not a draft. It's not a draft, my friends. Oh, he's coming in rock hard right now. How much does he have on board? Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Screw it. Let's just take it. Just end us, dude. Just, just end me, dude. All right, yeah. So that was just the worst end ever. Ugh. We'll play one more. Mentor of the Meek is a really good card. He is, it's a really good card. Absolutely. So, I mean, we could craft cards for this deck to make it a little better, but... I will play one more with this Demir deck. Uh, next time we play, I'm going to ha probably have another deck crafted. I'll be working on something. So maybe I'll do a poll in the community section or something to see what you guys would be interested in seeing for the next deck. Uh, this is It was a draft earlier, but this is not a draft. I'm just playing on ladder for fun now. Yeah. And another terrible hand. I mean, I could keep it. But this is really bad. This is really bad. This deck is cursed, Plessy. I think you were right. Like, even though it's a good deck, I just... It doesn't seem to uh, perform for us. Which kind of means it's probably not a good deck. Like, I, you can blame enough on a deck, but it, it needs to it needs to perform at the end of the day. It was doing well a while back. Um, he's thinking about keeping his hand or mulliganing. Yeah, the Chaos Gods already showed me humility, Bubba Bricks, with the uh, with the double Chaos Wand. That's a little better. I mean, it's not the best, because I have the islands, but I can still uh, use Discovery. So we are going to put that bottom. God, these hands are just absolute trash. See, if I had if I had a Swamp here, I could do really well for myself. Because I, uh, I could dead weight this guy before he gets bigger, but he's going to be way too big for me before... Oh, maybe not. My opponent might have gotten land screwed. Oh no, he's got evolving wilds. Okay, that's fine. If we draw, if we do draw that plane, though, I'm gonna be quite excited. Oh, let's or that that uh, swamp. Sorry. Okay, that's pretty good. That's that's like uh, could potentially save us. So we're gonna dead weight him. Take him out, which is uh, really good against the deck he's playing. Uh, next turn, we might use Notion Rain to try and draw. Oh no, we actually have to do this now. So we're going to play the Thoughtbound Phantasm. Uh, it's a 2-2 two -two defender. It can't attack until it becomes a 5-5, five -five, but whenever you Surveil, which is Lazav is going to do right now, it gets 1-1 one -one permanently, which is really good. It gets 1-1. We're going to throw that in here. I'm going to try and get something better. Our creature grows. Things are going well. I got two Chaos Wands, guys. <laughs> Welcome to Pound Town. Uh, hopefully I'll be the one taking... Delivering to Pound Town this game, we'll see. Uh, we are going to cast Thought Erasure. Because I want to see what he has in his hand. And we get to Surveil. He might have Abraska's Contempt. It's, it's giving him a chance to respond, which means that he probably has something. Yeah. So he's going to exile Lazav in response. Good play. I get to see his hand now and get rid of something. Uh, gruesome. 
The Eldest Reborn is pretty good. Uh, choose a creature card with converted mass one. So he just has the Pelt Collector now, so we're going to get rid of this, because that card's really good. And we have another Thought Erasure. Do we want to keep that on top? I don't mind keeping that on top. So my guy gets buffed again. from the. Uh, he's almost a 5-5, which is really good. Hey, Professor Pwn, dude, you missed it. I uh, I, I won a, uh, a draft. It was pretty sweet. So first we're going to cast a Discovery. We're going to try and draw a card and uh, get a land, maybe. So then we can cast a... Hmm, that, that bug's pretty good, actually. We need this. I don't think we need this, per se, because we have enough like Surveil and card draw on our hand. So that's going to be good. It's going to get us the Spy Bug. Just going to make uh, our guy a big 5-5. Five five. And now we can actually attack with it. He's going to cast this uh, gruesome, uh, gruesome Menagerie here, which is going to be pretty good for him. Yeah, I won the draft, dude. I went 7-1. and one. Uh, It's crazy. It was really good. We had a good deck. Thank you, Pwn. Thank you. This is, a, this is the last one of the night, though, this game here. I got a jam after this. So, we probably played the Spy Bug. We could double deadweight that, but that's just haggardness. He's going to block. Uh, so, yeah, I think we... Well, let's go to combat first. Attack. He's going to get that creature back with the Menagerie next turn. That's why he's, like, doing that, right? But it is what it is. Actually, I can get rid of that. What am I doing? I'm just like totally blanking right now. I was like about to let him get away with that. Uh, we'll take the swamp, actually. That's kind of useful. Oh man, he just got, he got reamed. Uh, I was white black in the draft. Charles, uh, I upload Warhammer every day. So tomorrow morning, you'll have some. Yeah. I, I guarantee one, one Warhammer video a day, um, but yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, we got enough for another pack. Let's open a pack together, guys. Do it. Get packs. Get some Ravnica packs in here. And here we go! Doing the stretches. I recorded four videos today for you guys. The Ritual of Suit. We now have two of these. So we could potentially work on like a mono black control deck. That would be really fun. I don't know how we would do that per se, but there's options. Uh, so right now I'm playing with a deck that I've crafted with my cards I have in my collection, but the draft I had to play with cards that uh, were totally like random. Yeah. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it. So in a summary of the night, we had a pretty good draft run. Uh, we got some packs, we got some free gems. So that means that I can do another draft for you guys in the next couple nights. So stay tuned, um, you know, sometimes seven, eight, nine at night. Uh, I'll be doing magic drafts throughout the week. It's not going to be every night, but um, I'll be doing that. So yeah, that's it for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that as well as a couple of constructed games with my Demir deck, which is very, very fun. Uh, it was The draft was Magic 19. Mono Black Suit Chaos Wand deck. Some dude, I could be persuaded to do that. So we could do like, you guys want to, hang on. Nope, Fear the Chaos Wand. The meme. Target opponent exiles cards. Oh my god, this is so bad. Guys, I think next time we'll do a draft, and by then I will have a Chaos Wand deck for you guys. Mono Black Chaos Wand Control. Uh, M it was M19, Pwn. Yeah. M19. So next time, Mono Black Chaos Wand. We're going to try and make it work. I don't know what the hell we're going to do, but we're going to try... I also have enough rares to start building a second deck too. So like an actual competitive deck. So I'm pretty excited about that. So again, big thanks to all of you guys for joining on stream. Hopefully you enjoyed this off stream, the little bit of magic, the gathering action. Uh, there will be a couple more throughout the week. And then this Saturday and Sunday, as usual, there will of course be a, a Warhammer tournament. I'm not sure it'll be Saturday or Sunday. We'll, we'll figure it out from there. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'm going to go get some rest and hang out with my lovely wife. And uh, that's it for now. So thanks again, guys. Have an excellent night, and uh, you guys all take care. Get some rest.